And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Now we're going to take a look at Urbania. Urbania is a city building game from Mayfair, a Euro game. Urbania has, for some reason to me, a lot of similarities to Ticket to Ride. It doesn't, it doesn't play like Ticket to Ride. Uh, the best way is going to be to show you in a minute, but this is a game in which you're building a city together, a theme that I enjoy, something that I like, and is what I call a lower medium weight Euro game. Let's take a look. Here's a picture of the board. Now the board is a bunch of plots and you set it up randomly at the beginning of the game. These four plots here in the middle of the board, or the five plots, I'm sorry, are developed. So you just randomly are going to be pulling buildings out of the bag and they're automatically developed. That's, they have the high speed train around them. All the rest of the plots that are around them are undeveloped plots. Each plot is a specific color and matches over here one of the cubes which shows how many developed plots you have. So this is the starting game here. There are two developed gray plots, one white, one pink. You say, well, that doesn't add up to four. That's because there are many blue plots on the board and blue plots, uh, which this one is right here, are basically wild plots. So they don't, they don't count for one of those colors. On a player's turn, they have two actions that they can take. There's different actions they can take and they can take the same action more than once. One of the actions they can take is they can draw cards. So when they draw cards, they can take two cards from this face up pile of cards. And when you take a card, that card is going to be replenished. These cards show icons on the different cards uh, that are either helmets working helmets or coins. And there's always three icons, but it could be a mixture of those. Actually, there's not always three icons. Sometimes there's two. And when, that's, when there's two, one of the icons is wild. Now, you could take cards here, or you can take cards from the top of the deck that you're drawing from. You can also, for one of your two cards that you draw, draw mission cards. Mission cards are cards that you are trying to accomplish at the end of the game, and I'll come back to mission cards later. So you can draw two cards. Technically, I guess on your turn you can draw four cards because you can do that twice. Another thing you can do is renew. Now, when you look at the different plots here, you can always renew a plot that's undeveloped that is next to a developed plot. So I could renew this one because it's next to this plot here. While I couldn't renew this one, it's diagonal to this plot, but I need to be orthogonal to a developed plot. To renew this one, it shows on there a pink helmet and it shows a one. That means I need to play a card from my hand that has at least one pink helmet on it. You can see that above it, there's, I need four pink helmets to develop this one. And over here is six, and that has a, a wild symbol, so it could be six of any helmet, but it has to be the same color. So it could be six pink, six brown, six white, etc. When you develop one, you will turn that property over, and before you do, the little white number on that property is how many points you score. You also get to draw a card on some properties. You notice on they're usually the lower scoring properties. This one you draw a card on, these two you don't. Also, when you turn it over, you just made another pink building, so then the pink cube up here would go up by one to show that the value of pink buildings has increased by one. So that's another action you can take. Uh, you're, you have a piece here that you will be keeping track of your points that you score during the course of the game. And then you can hire a specialist. There are six specialists up here above the board. Each of these specialists, although uh, we have different names for all of them, uh, these two look like a pair of uh, uh, former president and first lady, and we call this one the Cylon. Um, any, anyhow. Um, so you're, you want to hire these specialists. Each of these specialists matches one of the color buildings on the board. When you buy a specialist, you have to pay coins for that specialist. Now here's an interesting thing of the game. When you play a card, let's say I play this card for its one pink helmet. I then also place that card in front of me and later on I can spend the coins. This only works with helmets first, then coins. When I'm spending coins to hire a specialist, I can use cards that are in front of me that I've already spent on buildings or I can use cards from my hand. And 
when I'm hiring a specialist, the cost of each specialist is where that specialist's disc is. So right at the beginning of the game, they're all at one. But once I hire, let's say I hire the pink, pink Clinton and move him up. He moves up here to the two spot then. And I take him and put him in front of me. If anyone wants to hire him in the future, which means they steal him from me, they will have to pay at least two coins. Every time he moves up to one of these spots that has a card, then you also draw a card when you move him up. Once he gets up to the higher levels, five, six, seven, and eight, he, you no longer draw cards for them. Now, the reason that you want to hire these people is because at the end of your turn, you will look at all the specialists that you have in front of you. Let's say I have the pink, the, uh, the green, and the white specialist in front of me. So I have these three specialists, they're all in front of me. So when it happens, I will look at how much each of those is worth with their building tokens. So I have the pink, he's worth two, the green is worth zero, and the white is worth one. That's three points that I will get at the end of every turn until someone takes those specialists from me. And you can see as the game progresses that these specialists will get higher and higher. Now I've showed you three actions. The fourth action that you can take on your turn is simply to submit a goal card. You take that goal card and you put it face down in front of you. You can only have three goal cards that you submit over the course of the game. You can draw as many as you want, but you can only submit three. The cost of submitting a goal card is all your points divided by 10. So if you have 38 points, you would pay three points because it's always rounded down. So the sooner you play these goal cards, the cheaper they are. Now the game is going to end when one of the sections of the board, and the sections, there's these streets, they're hard to see from here, but the board is split into four sections. If one of these sections has two or less undeveloped properties on it, then the game will have one more entire round and end. Or the game will also end if one of the people makes it all the way up to the five level in their value, and then again, we run one more round and the game ends. At the end of the game, in, uh, you have the points that you got during the game, but you also score for your goal cards, which will score quite a bit. Each of the goal cards, and let's take a focus look here at this one. Each of the goal cards shows you points that you would get. For example, this one is I get five points for every building in this column. And of course, I would rotate it to show, but every building that's finished, that's been built, I get five points for. So this one here could be a maximum of 35 points. Uh, sometimes they'll give you points per, for a specific type of building. This is six for every type of building that's been built. That one's six for every type of building. Sometimes there are two points for every building that's been built in the whole top half of the board and that there are fewer, fewer points, but you have a possibility of getting more. And then there's cards that give you five points times the current value of the person, not where their cube is, but where their disc is. So if their disc made it all the way up to five, this gentleman would be worth 25. Or there's double ones where I take both of these, add them together and multiply it by three. You add all the points of, that you've got from your goal cards and everything together, and whoever has the most points is the winner. I'm gonna talk bad here first, and I, and, I, and I have to do this because let me tell you straight up front that I really, 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 is that enough reallys? Really like this game. It's fun, but, ah, my eyes! It's just so terribly graphic design. Every single person I played with, every single one, not one person has said, oh, well, the board is not so bad. Everyone has said, wow, it's really hard to see the pieces on the board. If they fix that, if that was fixed, this would be like a nine rating. That's how much I think this game is cool, but that really brings it down. Now, I'm going to keep it in my collection, but ah, it's such, oh. All right, ranting out of the way. This is very interesting of a game to me. I like the different paths. The goal cards are extremely powerful. You are gonna get a lot of points from those goal cards. So you have to realize that. You have to prepare for that. You can't just throw them down the first three you get because you will be tempted to. Now, 
you won't probably be able to get the goal cards you want. And if you spend too much time looking for your goal cards, then you won't solve them. But it's a nice addition to the game. This is where I said the game reminded me a bit of Ticket to Ride because these goal cards reminded me of connecting the routes. It gave me something to focus on in the game. Because the game is all about getting points and doing different things to get points, well, the goal card focus your, your direction to that end. One of the neat mechanics of this game is, is the building aspect of when you play cards to build something on the board, the coins stay in front of you. You can use those coins to hire the specialist. Now, as the game progresses, you're like, oh, these specialists give you a few points each turn. Hey, they give you a few points each turn. Don't miss out on that. That can be a lot of points as the game progresses. Uh, and so it's a very interesting thing. I really enjoy the different things. You can try to build big buildings and accomplish big building goals. You can try to take these specialists, maybe go back and forth with other people when they're specialists, but trying to get these specialists uh, so that you can uh, get those co points every turn and then at the end of the game maybe that's part of your goal too. This isn't a game where I'm saying there's 857,000 different strategies. Now there's really maybe three or four but they're good ones and it was solid and fun and interesting enough. This is a game that despite the, the very busy board which detracts from it, I, like I said I'm still going to keep because it is an excellent well-designed game and one that I'm very much looking forward to play again. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at Funagain.com.